who is the 2024 version of Jaime Jaquez? In this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, I am going to discuss seniors who I think could have an impact as rookies next year. Jaime Jaquez is playing an important role for the Miami Heat, and he was drafted behind several freshmen that are playing in the G League or not playing at all. So in this episode, I'm going to talk about prospects that I believe who will probably be drafted later on in the first round, maybe second round, or undrafted, that I believe could have an impact as a rookie. Stay tuned to find out the top Jaime Jaquez candidates for 2024. Big shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Rafael Barlow, the director of scouting for NBA Big Board. Sorry if you hear basketballs bouncing in the background. I am recording in between a basketball camp. I am in London. I'm in the UK today. The last... I don't know. I'm, my days are all mixed up. The last 10 to 12 days I've been in Nairobi, Kenya, but today I am in the UK looking for undiscovered talent in England. You know, England is not a, a basketball hotbed. It's not a place where you usually find really talented, high-level basketball players, but I believe that this place could be a hidden gem. There's a lot of immigrants. There's a lot of people from all over the world who are migrating to London, and a lot of them have a soccer background. And so I'm here just looking for some sleepers. But anyway, before I get into this episode, I want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Now, you know I'm a big fan of Game Time if you are an everydayer. And all you have to do is download the Game Time app, and you just need to create an account. It used to code Locked On NBA, and you can get twenty dollars off your first purchase. Game Time is my favorite app to purchase tickets. All right, so I want to talk about Jaime Jaquez. Jaime Jaquez was the 18th pick in last year's draft. He had a great college career at UCLA. He's one of the best players statistically in UCLA history. Now you know UCLA has like one of the craziest traditions and just an amazing group of alumni and so many talented players have played at UCLA. So if you are among the all-time leaders at a school that produced Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or, or I'm sorry, Lou Alcindor and, and Bill Walton and so many legendary players, you have to, I mean, you have to be pretty dang good. And despite the fact that Jaime Jaquez posted crazy numbers throughout his career because he was a senior and it kind of had a, a unique game that didn't necessarily fit the mold that NBA teams always look for. He wasn't like a high flyer. He wasn't like this considered an elite sniper. Even though he is a very good athlete, I mean, you can go back and see the dunk that he had at Summer League on Colin Castleton to see that he's athletic. But he was a guy that just didn't fit a lot of the, the prototypes that teams are looking for. But the Miami Heat, the team that is not afraid to draft who they like and go against the consensus, took Hawkes with the 18th pick. And he is producing at a high level for a team that is expected to, you know, make a deep playoff run. Hawkes is averaging 13 points per game on 51, 38, 80 six shooting splits he is without a doubt in my opinion without a doubt first team all rookie as of today so with that being said I'm wondering who could be the 2024 version of Jaime Jaquez a senior that gets passed up in the draft by a younger player who is thought to have more upside despite being nowhere near as productive that comes in and makes an impact as a rookie I have like 15 guys that I think could fill that role, but in this episode, I'm only going to name five. So I guess I'm gonna break this up into a part two or part three. And the first player that I wanna talk about is Kevin McCullough Jr. Now, before I, I get into McCullough, there's a few other seniors that are producing, that are that are playing a, a bigger role than I anticipated. Tamani Kamara, for example, from Dayton. He has started 16 or 17 games for the Blazers. He's averaging seven points per game. You have, you have Trace Jackson Davis, who has had back-to-back -back double figure games, had a big game last night. Well, for me, because I'm in London, it was this morning. But he's had two big double figure games since playing. And he was a guy that I thought could come in and contribute. And he was the 57th pick in the draft. I mean, we got a guy that was selected number 57, and he has more points than guys that were selected in the lottery. 
Now you may say, oh, well, you know, the guys selecting the lottery have a higher upside, and they're, you know, they're they're much younger, and TJD is closer to a ceiling. But I think Trace Jackson Davis is going to end up being in Golden State's rotation the remainder of the season. And then you have Craig Porter Jr., who came on the podcast earlier this year. Shout out to Craig Porter Jr., undrafted. He's playing 14 minutes per game for the Cleveland Cavaliers and averaging a little under seven points per game. Then you have Kobe Brown who I, I think caught a lot of people by surprise when the Clippers selected him at number 30. He's in the Clippers rotation. The Clippers are hot, the hottest team in the NBA right now. And he's playing about 11 minutes per game in December. I mean, he's taking minutes away from P.J. Tucker, who was a big part of the James Harden trade. So in this episode, I'm going to talk about some guys that I think could have a similar impact as rookies. So the first player I want to talk about is Kevin McCuller Jr. Kevin McCuller is a fifth-year senior. Back when I was in college, we called them super seniors. And McCullers having a phenomenal year for Kansas, averaging 19 points per game, shooting 38% from three. Yes, Kevin McCuller is shooting 38% from three. The big knock on McCuller is his outside shooting. And he's also shooting 81% from the foul line. So this has been a huge year. And I'll be honest, I thought McCullough was making a mistake by coming back to school. In my opinion, I thought, oh, he's going to be 23 around draft time. It's going to be harder for him to crack the first round. I thought he would have been drafted in 2023, but it looks like coming back to school was was a genius decision for him, especially the way he's shooting. Now, like I said, he will be 23 on draft night, but if he can keep up the shooting numbers, I think he could be the rare 23-year-old that ends up being a first-round pick in the modern NBA. Prior to this season, 31% from three was his most efficient year prior to this season. But again, he's at 38%. And for the last two years, I've been struggling trying to find a, a good comparison for McCullough. I think I found one. And it's just in very recent play, but it is Dante Exum, the Dallas Mavericks version of Dante Exum. Exum has excelled playing for Dallas. I think he's averaging like 18 points per game in his last last five games, has filled in well for Kyrie Irving. But Exum's size and versatility has been, I mean, it's been a blessing for Dallas. He's, he's big enough to play some one, some two, some three. He can defend multiple positions, and he's shooting the ball well. He's a good decision maker. He's averaging about five assists per game. And then I think Kevin McCullough, if he can knock down outside shots, could play a similar role for a team that Dante Exum is playing for the 23-24 Dallas Mavericks. Now, he's not as fast as Exum, or at least not as fast as a young Exum. I think Exum has lost a little bit of his of his first step that he had when he came into the league. But I, like I said, I think McCullough can play a, a similar role as a defender, a outside shooter, a secondary playmaker, a guy that can bring the ball up court and initiate the offense and score in transition. I mean, McCullough has... I mean, he has done an excellent job this year in improving his draft stock, and he's made some good decisions over the last couple of years. Leaving Texas Tech, I think, was a good decision. Going to Kansas was a good decision. Coming back for year five. Now, McCullough has good NBA positional size for a wing at 6'7". He can defend multiple positions. He was the quarterback of an elite Texas Tech defense a few years ago, was one of the, the runner-ups for Defensive Player of the Year. He could play multiple positions. He is a connector. He cuts off the ball. He just does a lot of the little things and the intangibles that contribute to winning. So I think Kevin McCullough could be a first round pick and could have a Jaime Jaquez type impact as a rookie next year. Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Guru, Josh Lloyd, to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all season long so whether you are prepping for a daily draft or you're just looking for players on the waiver wire every week locked on and josh lloyd is going to provide you with players that are guaranteed to fit your roster guaranteed to fit your roster so let's see who josh has picked for this week's ebay's guaranteed fit fantasy picks of the week he has Jaden ivy his level of play has improved since joining the starting lineup, I know a lot of people were calling for that. And Ivy has, again, since joining the starting lineup, and since the Pistons are going nowhere, and if you're a Pistons fan, sorry about that. But that's why you got to tune into Locked On NBA Big Board to find out who would be the best fit 
keyword fit for the Pistons. Josh Lloyd, just like everyone at eBay Motors and the Locked On crew, understand how important fit is. And eBay Motors knows that a championship team is all about each player being the perfect fit, which is the same with your car. So they have over 122 million parts to choose from at eBay Motors. And you can make sure that your ride stays running smoothly or even looking good because they have a bunch of parts, whether it's I don't know, headlights, roof racks, bumpers, whatever you need, they have at eBay Motors with 122 million parts. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, it is guaranteed to fit your vehicle the first time, every time, or your money back. So check out. So go to ebaymotors.com and the eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. I want to talk to you about Locked On Sports Today. Locked On Sports Today is the first 24 hours a day, seven days a week streaming channel. Follow Locked On Sports Today on YouTube. I mean, it is the first of its kind. It gives you all the local analysis that you get from your local local experts. But also, we have the national shows, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Big shout out to David Locke and the Locked On team for making history. The first 24 hours a day, seven days a week streaming channel. So check it out. Locked on sports today. The next player that I want to talk about is another former Texas Tech player, and it is a guy that I feel like has been on draft boards, at least on my draft board, for a long time. It is Terrence Shannon Jr. I actually remember where I was at when I first watched Terrence Shannon Jr.'s film for you know just covering him as an NBA prospect and I remember because it was like the same day I did film on Drew Timmy so it was like three years ago but Shannon Jr. is still in college he made the interesting decision to develop in college as opposed to in the NBA or playing in the G League and I think with NIL I think that could be a route that more players take but I think if he would have come out last year the year before two years ago he would have been in the G League but he's opted to develop in, in college like I said he's playing in front of you know big crowds and some some meaningful games and I like what Shannon Jr. has has done this season. He's averaging 20.9 points per game on 50, 41, 80 shooting splits, which is crazy in a sense because his freshman year, he was such a reluctant shooter. He was a, a, a player that passed up open shots, was, I don't want to say afraid, but he was just a not, he, he was not a confident shooter. That's the best way I want to say it. And he only attempted like 1.2 threes per game as a freshman. And now he's up to 6.5 to the point where now I think he may settle for too many threes. But hey, if you're shooting six threes a game and you're shooting 41%, it is hard to, to knock that type of efficiency on that type of volume. But he's been up and down as a shooter throughout his career. So I think the key for him is being a consistent shooter. So as a freshman, he shot 25% for three. As a sophomore, 35%, which is a good jump. You want to see a 10% jump. And then it was 38% as a junior. And then it went down to 32% last year as a senior, and now as a super senior, he's at 41%. What I, I like about Shannon is he has NBA athleticism. He does have the physical tools to be able to defend at a high level. He's a good athlete, and he's a good rebounder at 6'6". He's averaging about four rebounds per game. Long arms, he's lefty, has a, a, a decent first step. He's fast in the open floor. I think his game is suited for him to be an ideal role player. Is a decent slasher, mostly on straight line drives. Crashes the offensive glass. Again, transition finisher. I think that he can play a role as like a, a ball mover. Not a real creative scorer, not a guy that is, is real shifty, but I don't think he needs to be in the NBA. I think he just needs to defend, run the floor, score in transition knock down open shots and if he can attack closeouts and make the right reads I think he can have a long NBA career. So Terrence Shannon is another player that I think could have a Jaime Jaquez type impact as a rookie. Of course he needs to go to the right team but he's a player that I think would fit in well on a veteran team that is looking to compete that may have a bunch of players on the top of the, the the rotation making a lot of money and they need some cheap players to fill in some back end rotation minutes so I think Terrence Shannon could be one of those guys. Alright I want to talk about Oso Igodaro. 
Also, Iguodaro is one of my favorite players. He's someone that I had as a first-round pick last year. I thought that if he would have stayed in the draft or put his name in, I, I would have taken him in the first round because I think he has a game that is suited for the NBA to, to be a role player that can come in and make an impact right away. He is an excellent passer. He's an excellent passer. And like I said, I believe he'll be able to help a team from day one. He can serve as like your, your athletic vertical lob threat. He's an efficient finisher around the rim, has great touch around the basket, and he can make plays in the middle of the floor. And to me, that's very important, especially if you have a really high level playmaker. So I live in Dallas. And so Dallas is, is one of my comparisons that I like to use. And by living in Dallas, I go to almost every Mavs game when I'm in town. And last year, one of Dallas's issues were they, they weren't athletic and they didn't have a big that they could give the ball to in the middle of the floor that could make a play. Maybe Christian would, but he was shooting it. I look at Dwight Powell, if they gave the ball to him in the middle of the floor when they trapped Luke or Kyrie, his back was turned, he gave it right back. This year, they've upgraded with Derek Lively and Lively has been a pleasant surprise as a passer. He's someone that can make the right read in the middle of the floor and he has been a vertical lob threat. Well, also Iguodaro, I think, would be perfect for a team like Dallas or maybe a team that has a superstar that gets trapped that you can give the ball to in the middle of the floor because he is an excellent passer. He is comfortable, you know, doing one or two dribble drives. He can face up an attack, but he can serve as your vertical lob threat. He's not as big as a guy like Derek Lively, but he is, like I said, a vertical lob threat. But passing is his greatest strength. I actually think he is a more athletic, better passing version of Dwight Powell. Dwight Powell is not a great rebounder, probably one of the the poorest rebounding fives in the league. And Eagle Dar averages about six rebounds per game. He's not a great rebounder, but I do think that he can have a role as a rotation big. Like I said, that you can give the ball to at the high post. He can find cutters. He can swing the ball, find an open shooter. Is perfect for a, a James Harden, Luka Doncic, Trey Young, like an elite high volume ball handler that gets trapped that you can give an outlet to in the middle of the floor and then you can you know create advantages there so I really like also Iguodaro the big concern is he just doesn't space the floor he does not space the floor or doesn't really look to space the floor but defensively I think he's fine averages about two stocks per game if you combine his blocks and steals he's below average foul shooter around under 70 percent but he has good touch around the rim which makes him pretty confusing in a sense because it's like once he gets inside of I don't know, outside of 10 feet, it's like the touch just completely disappears. If he can develop into a floor spacer, then you, you really have something there. But I'll give you some of the notes that I have on him. He's long, he's skilled, he's a vertical lob threat, comfortable facing up and attacking, can handle the ball a little bit in space, has the NBA frame, broad shoulders. He is a low post or high post ball mover. He is an excellent pick and roll threat, in my opinion. I think that's going to be you know, a role that he's going to excel at in the NBA as, as a pick and roll complimentary piece to a point guard and just doesn't really miss a lot of shots around the basket. But the key for him that I think will help him maximize his potential is him becoming a better floor spacer. Like I said, if he can space the floor, then you have something there. All right, when we return, I have one more prospect that I want to talk about. I thought I was going to be able to get five in today, but I'm going to stop at four. And I'm going to dedicate a whole section to one of my favorite players in the draft, a guy that has literally come out of nowhere and put himself in position to be drafted. I don't see his name on draft boards, but, I mean, it's hard to ignore the production from San Diego State's Jaden Ladee. So stay tuned to hear my thoughts on Ladee and why I think he could be one of the most impactful rookies next year. Stay tuned. All right, I want to talk about the Game Time app. I am a big, big supporter and fan of the Game Time app. It was very simple. It was very easy to use. Went on the app, looked at the tickets. They have the all-inclusive pricing, so you know exactly what it's going to cost before you pay. Unlike a lot of different sites, the price is say $50, and then right when it's time to check out, you find out that that ticket was $88.
But with Game Time, you have all inclusive price. You get a picture of your seat, and you get it from the actual venue. It's not just a random template. It's from the actual venue. They show you where you're sitting. And Game Time has last minute deals, flash deals, zone deals. Easy to find and buy tickets for every type of event in your area. It's not just basketball or football. They have concerts, plays, and they have a lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection. But the most important thing, at least to me, about FanDuel is you get to see the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect once you arrive. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NBA L O C K E D O N N B A. I say it again, L O C K E D O N N B A. You can get twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, use the code Locked On NBA, and you can get twenty dollars off. So download the Game Time app. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, the last prospect that I want to talk about today is Jaden Ledee. Ledee is a player that I is, well, I shouldn't say I think. He's having a breakout senior season. I think at the very minimum, he has put himself in position to be a two-way player. And being a two-way player, I mean, we've seen with Craig Porter. Craig Porter is on a two-way, was undrafted by the Cleveland Cavaliers. He started a game. He's playing 14 minutes a game. He has outplayed... A lot of prospects that were selected ahead of him. I think he's averaging more minutes per game than Grady Dick, who was a lottery pick. Craig Porter is a, a player that didn't have your traditional path to the NBA, went to junior college, had a, a good career at Wichita State. He filled up the stat sheet, was very unique in a sense because he was like this rim-protecting 6'2 guard. He averaged like a block per game at 6'2, but he just had some intangibles, some grit, and just has a unique story that, I mean, I, I think has provided this chip on his shoulder that has propelled him into, you know, playing rotation minutes in the NBA for a team that is expected to make the playoffs in the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, Ladee's a different player than Craig Porter Jr., but I think he can have a similar impact as a two-way guy that ends up playing. I mean, he may even get drafted. I think I would select him in the draft. Very unique, and I'm going to tell you why I think he's unique. First of all, he's like 6'9", 240. Has the body of your, your old-school 1990s NBA bruiser, but he is very very skilled if you look at him just physically you you may think he's a bruiser now he, now he is a bruiser don't get me wrong he's not afraid of contact loves to mix it up rebounds at a high rate but he is very skilled and i think his most underrated skill is his passing ability i'll tell you a little bit about Lindy. He is having a breakout senior season, like I said. Played a little bit for San Diego State last year. I shouldn't say a little bit. I'm sorry. Played about 18 minutes per game for San Diego State last year. San Diego State went to the Final Four. Before San Diego State, he went to Ohio State. TCU was playing a little bit of the five based off of his size. I just honestly, I just don't think that he was used correctly. And I, and I get it. You know, college coaches want to win, and you have a guy with his physical stature. It's kind of natural to put him on the block and tell him to defend fives. But he is not your, your typical five. He's skilled. He grew up playing point guard, and that is a big reason why he's such a good passer. He's averaging like 1.4 assists per game, but he is a much, much better passer and creator than the numbers indicate. He makes advanced reads. He swings it out to guys in the corner. He, he finds cutters. I mean, he is a natural playmaker, which I, I, I mean, based off of what I just gave you about Igodaro, you obviously see that I love bigs that can pass the ball. And that is, I think, Ladee's greatest asset right now. But what's is crazy is that that's saying a lot considering he's averaging 22.8 points per game, 10 rebounds, shooting 56% from the floor, 39% from three, 75% from the foul line. So anytime you got somebody averaging basically 23, 10 on 56, 39, 79, 75 shooting splits, I mean, how, how do you not produce those type of numbers at a high level and you're not on draft board? So I I think Ladee is definitely someone that is, is draftable, but he has a, a unique skill set. 
with his size. And I'll just give you some of my notes. He's a big, strong, physical, low post presence, has a strong lower body. He is a throwback, low post scorer with modern day skill set. So he has good feel as a passer, makes advanced reads. He does the little things like he sprints the floor, loves to play through contact, plays bully ball. He can face up and attack in space. And that's something that I think is pretty unique. He's very comfortable if you give him the ball, at, whether it's the elbow, the short corner. If you got a slower big on him, then he can beat him off the dribble and has the skill set and, and moves to you know face up and attack and make plays there. If you put a smaller guy on him, I mean, he's 6'9", 240. He's a bruiser. I mean, he will punish a smaller defender in the post. He draws a lot of fouls with his physicality. He's a good foul shooter. Excellent rebounder, like I said, 10 rebounds per game. Again, he played point guard in high school. So when you have a guy that is 6'9", 240, and I keep saying that, 6'9", 240, with some wing skills and, and passing vision, like, he could be a weapon. He could be a steal for the right team. I don't want to say Draymond Green, but I think he can have a Draymond Green type impact on offense. I think he can be a guy that can, you know, play in the, the dribble handoff game with, with, with the great point guard. I think he can pick and pop, knock down open shots. I think he can find the cutters. I think he's a guy that if you trap, you know, the point guard, you give him the ball in the middle of the floor, he can either knock down the, the mid-range jumper or either the, the floater, which I don't think that he's had... A, an opportunity to show it but he does have a floater game and then he could if you play him at the four he can find like you know your vertical lob threat five if, if there is a situation where you're playing you know four on three so I think he can do all of that I don't know why he's not getting a lot of attention I mean he's almost tripled his scoring numbers since since uh, last season and he played a role on a very good team that went to the Final Four. Now he's excelling in a, a starting role and in a starring role. So I think L Ladie is definitely one of the more underrated prospects in the country, but I also think that he is someone that can have an impact as a rookie simply because I think with this draft class here, it's going to have a lot of young guys. You're going to have a lot of players that aren't ready to contribute. A lot of players that I, I think are going to end up having to spend a significant amount of time in the G League. And I do think that there are teams that are like, hey, we're looking for someone that can come in and contribute, whether it's 10 minutes a game, five minutes per game, and just come in and play a role. And I think with Ladi's skill, Ladi's skill set, he can play as your, your, you know, your, your five, your four. And if the outside shooting continues at 38% clip, I mean, I, I think he's going to be one of the hotter names around draft time. Well, that wraps up this episode. I mean, the, the, the noise in the background is getting a little bit louder. Once again, thank you for making the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. I'm excited. It is my last day on the road. I have been on the road since December 5th. It is December 20th. I'm going home, get to see my wife, get to see my baby, get to sleep in my bed, and and, and, and just, uh, you know, live my normal life as an American. I'll be able to catch up on work. It's been tough trying to watch games at 3 o'clock in the morning, trying to scout, trying to create content, do podcasts. I haven't been writing on NBA Big Board. Well, well, I have. I have, like, so many articles that I haven't been able to publish. But once again, thank you for making the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. Once again, it's Rafael Barlow, and I am out.